there's so many things that can be said about this gospel because this this gospel reading is the uh, is the climax. We have three climaxes in Mark's gospel, right? Some theologians believe that Mark has a low Christology, that Mark doesn't have the high Christology of Jesus being God right from the get-go, right? Um, it's kind of like a, a low Christology. We come to encounter the Lord as a, as a human, right? He's a, he's a divine person, but he has, he, because of his incarnation, right? They believe we encounter the Lord and then we get to know about him. Today in our modern age, often we get to know the high Christology, the almighty who God is. And then we also get to encounter him in prayer and ex- life experiences. Mark begins his gospel with the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. Whoa. High Christology right there. This is Jesus. He's the son of God. In the middle of the gospel, we have Peter, a Gentile, saying, this is the Messiah. This is the son of God. And then at the end of Mark's gospel, we have a a centurion, the, the soldier, a Gentile, saying, truly, this was the son of God. Okay, So we can talk all about that, but... Uh, just to back up a bit, yesterday we had that healing miracle of the man who was blind. And if you recall, it wasn't um, one and done. Jesus himself prayed twice. He prayed twice. And, you know, there's a play on words here. Mark's gospel is, is brilliant because he's showing us how the disciples came to see clearly, Right? And uh, it's, it was a process. Even, even Peter, with, through divine intervention, through divine assistance, was able to say, this is the Son of God. Right? But he didn't know. What, what does that mean? He is the Messiah. Right? He was thinking in worldly terms that the Messiah would come and bring power to the people. Right? Freedom from the, from the Romans and all that stuff. Right? But... Um, so there's this process. It's a process that's happening here. Like uh, I, I did a baptism on Sunday and I was sharing the analogy of Dr. Mary Healy who says that uh, baptism, yes, it's, it happens and you are ontologically a new person. Your being changes. You're a child of God. But baptism actually comes from a pagan word uh, used in a recipe for making pickles. <laughs> The cucumber must be baptized in the vinegar. So you don't just put that cucumber in the vinegar and boop, here comes a pickle. No, it has to be marinated. Right? With with us, we come to know God through encounters, even daily encounters. We get to know more and more that truth of the high Christology. Right? It's a whole process and we come to... Receive healings and cures, physical cures often. But I just want to back up a bit because what's happening here is, um, is just, again, so brilliant in Mark's gospel because the geographical area is super important because it, it plays a, a backdrop on Jesus' whole mission of where he wants his disciples to go. Because Caesarea Philippi uh, was also known as Panea, which is where the pagan god pan was worshipped and this is uh, a god of lust of uh, bestiality and uh, there's it also means uh, many gods if you go to um, this area today there's still little um, little altars little cut out areas right but what's happening here is that jesus is bringing his people not into a jewish territory This is Gentile territory, pagan territory. Some rabbis forbid Jews to even go there. Jesus is going there telling them, hey, your mission is going to be to confront. Your mission is going to be to bring back those who are so lost. The Lord goes there. In the news, we just heard recently of a a young high school student named uh, Josh Alexander who was um, 
confronting the uh, the uh, uh, gender ideology in Renfrew. He was suspended from from class, for, suspended from school. And he went back. Right. He's trying to be prophetic. Is it the 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 most uh, appropriate way of doing it? I don't know, but we certainly do need to confront our society. Uh, recently, I think it was just two days ago, and the same guy, uh, Mr. Alexander, was um, protesting against a drag queen that was taking a uh, drag queen event taking place here at the uh, Ottawa Art Gallery. Right? The Lord is telling us that our mission is not just going to be here in the church. We need to evangelize. We need to go out. And this this place where it's taking place in uh, Caesarea Philippi, right? Just that word, Caesarea Philippi. King Herod uh, named that place after Caesar Augustus, Caesarea, right? And then Herod's son, Philip, renamed that place after his himself, Philippi, Caesarea Philippi, right? The worship of self kind of thing. And Jesus is telling them, There's a new king in town. <laughs> Jesus. He's the Messiah, the anointed one. And um, it's that same event that we hear in Matthew's gospel, Matthew 16. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That, that cave inside that huge mountain where they were at was actually called the, the, the gate of hell. But we don't have... Um, those words that on this rock I will build my church because it's Mark's gospel. And traditionally, uh, we are told that um, Mark wrote down the gospel as Peter was saying it to him. And Peter, in his humility, left that part out. But he, he told us about the, uh, the reproach that Jesus gave him. Right? Peter, in his humility... So, yes, we pray for miracles like we, we read in yesterday's gospel, the man, born, uh, the man who was blind, who was healed, right? Awesome, aha, glory moments. Yes, we want that glory. We want the healings and the cure. God wants that for us. But there's going to be suffering. There's going to be suffering because we're confronting another kingdom, a kingdom of darkness, the prince of this world. But uh, brothers and sisters, do not uh, be weary, do not be discouraged because we are following the Lord. And this cross, this suffering that we're going through is a prelude to the resurrection. Right? We, we, can, we can rejoice in that, in our sufferings, because we know that death doesn't have the last say. God triumphs and uh, he's calling us and he's, and he's with us in our suffering. Uh, he obviously wants the glory for us too, but um, he's with us in our suffering. So I hope this helps you to have a, a happy and holy day, to uh, remain faithful, remain true to the Lord, and to confront the, the world in its sin, and to evangelize, to bring many uh, to the Lord.